The Deadly Premonition series climbed up the rank to cult classic for its colorful array of characters and a completely out there story that was funny to go through as much as it was fascinating. Deadly Premonition 2 hopes to continue that trend, but is this a bad game that's so bad it's good? Or just a bad game? The first few hours of Deadly Premonition 2 were dreadfully slow. In many ways, the story acts as both a prequel and a sequel to the original with how its narrative is told. Across the 20 hour campaign, we're switching between a 2019 Aliyah Davis who is interrogating a shriveled up Zack, and a 2005 York Morgan investigating a murder in Louisiana. For the first 30 minutes, I'm playing as Aliyah, interviewing Zack. I have no idea what's happening. Characters speak at a slow pace, and the gameplay is constantly switching between conversations where I physically have to press a button to continue the conversation, and an auto-continuous conversation. This slow introduction bored me immensely, and I was excited when it finally ended 30 minutes later, and I got to the game's title screen. Suddenly I'm playing as York in 2005, and I can move around this small town in Louisiana. I felt like a prisoner who had just been set free. So confused about the narrative, but free. It wasn't until a few hours into the story that things started to become more clear in regard to what the story is, what the laws of this universe are, and so on. It becomes so clear in fact that the actual mystery of it all suddenly becomes a bit too predictable as opposed to the chaotic twist in the original Deadly Premonition that at least made the bad parts of it hilariously good. In its sequel, it's just a mess. As mentioned earlier, throughout the campaign we're seeing the perspective of a new character, Aliyah Davis, and a 2005 York Morgan. Playing as Aliyah felt tedious, not because of her character, but the scenes she's put in. We're interviewing Zach Morgan regarding his investigation in 2005, and the pacing of these scenes are slow and repetitive. Zach being York's split personality counterpart, he doesn't exude the overly positive childlike wonder that York does when we play as him. It quickly became apparent how that character's charm is the sole reason Deadly Premonition can be carried along even with all its technical issues. When playing as York Morgan though, things start to pick up. Louisiana is filled with a handful of interesting NPCs, there's David Jawada who essentially runs every position at the local hotel, there's the young little Patricia Woods who despite being a child, feels like the adult in the room at most times. Her father Melvin Woods is the town sheriff, but at times comes out like the goofball of the town. These characters completely made Louisiana for me, though there were so few of them compared to the likes of the original. It led to me feeling like this portrayal of Louisiana was a bit barren. Exploring the town, quests would always be placed across each end of the map. This often led to me running back and forth between locations on the loud but low framerate skateboard. Occasionally some quests would need me to be on a specific day or time, so I'd have to race back to my hotel room to sleep and let time go by. It felt slow with the highlights of exploring the town being occasionally coming across an interesting character and some new evidence for the investigation. However, the sequel tends to hold your hand through its investigations. Whereas the original game would require some sort of critical thinking, Premonition 2 just has you clicking on every piece of evidence and then you're done. When combat started to get introduced, it felt bare bones. I had a tranquilizer pistol I'm able to use pretty early on that controls terribly and feels slow. Luckily we're able to use voodoo charms to increase the stats of York like a mini RPG system. Sadly though, it didn't have much of a use because things like damage upgrades were needed when enemies go down in one or two hits. Most of my upgrades went towards stamina and health because I hated having to wait for my stamina to catch up with me anytime I wanted to run through areas. All in all, Deadly Premonition 2 was deadly alright, deadly shallow and repetitive. Navigating around town was a chore, combat left a lot to be desired, and at times, the performance made gameplay unplayable. Its most redeeming quality is the cast of characters that kept an upbeat, quirky personality. It was truly the only entertainment I got out of playing this. Being a Nintendo Switch exclusive, I never expected Deadly Premonition 2 to be a technical masterpiece. I mean, anyone that played the first one should expect a low bar for performance. However, the sequel somehow lowers that bar even more. It's terrible. While riding around town on my skateboard, gameplay struggled to maintain double digit frame rates and when it did maintain it, it looked like a bad attempt at a stop motion video. Mirror reflections looked like what a handheld and dock gameplay comparison would look like for an intensive Switch game. There's a long list of imperfections like muddy textures, lifeless character models, bugs that made me see through my head, NPCs bouncing, and the game just crashing on me. Some of these issues were more frustrating than others, the game crashing is just unacceptable, while things like the low frame rates and the odd NPC behaviors seem more like purposely done hiccups in hopes of being so bad it's comedically good. These issues feel more frustrating here than in the original though. Whereas the first game had a unique story that kept you engaged, this sequel doesn't have that armor to protect it from all these smaller bugs. Technical issues aside, the depiction of Louisiana feels barren, lacking in things to do and people to interact with. With so little to do, the constant fetch quests and collectible quests got tiresome rather quickly. 
Just like his visuals, Deadly Premonition 2's audio mixing is all over the place. Running around Louisiana, York's loud footsteps overpower just about anything else in the scene. I can barely hear his dialogue or the music playing in the background. It gets even worse when I get on the skateboard and it sounds louder than a driving car. It's so obnoxious. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. Oh, most of it. Dialogue between characters seems adequate, but the pacing of conversation seems off because the game is constantly switching between having me physically continue the conversation and it doing so automatically. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not at 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That. Deadly Premonition 2 is a bad game. Not hilariously bad, but just straight up bad. Its narrative stumbles upon its introduction, and by the time it starts to make sense, it's to the point of being predictable, losing what made the story in the first game so exciting at times. The gameplay is repetitive and a technical mess across the board. The motivation to improve skills or weapons with charms is missing and without an engaging story, I felt uninspired to put any effort into the campaign. By the end of the 20 hour story, I felt exhausted by it all. With the one redeeming quality being hanging out with York's pop cultured personality and antics once again. 